Protracted spells of inactivity, brutal difficulty spikes, an extraordinary amount of time and effort for even the slightest reward. Yes, Radiation City offers all of these things, and suffers from plenty of frustrating flaws to boot. But if you can get past the ugliness and general yank of the whole thing, there's actually something quite absorbing underneath. Your planes come down over Pripyat some 40 years on from the Chernobyl disaster. This places Radiation City around 20 years into the future, which probably explains all the zombies running around. It's up to you to scavenge, fight, sneak, and craft your way towards some answers, but mainly just survive. It's a first person game where action is a secondary concern. If you're gonna last the night, you gotta explore abandoned houses for food and materials. Guns are a rarity, so you gotta make use of crowbars and kitchen knives to fend off the alarmingly swift zombies that lurk about. Better to avoid melee combat altogether though, as it's a clumsy and messy affair. What you really need to focus on is grabbing loads of stuff and figuring out what to keep in your limited inventory space. How many soup cans do you need? Do you even have a tin opener? Your protagonist is subject to all the frailties of the human form. You have to deal with hunger and thirst, you'll get cold, pick up diseases and sustain cuts, all of which must be addressed if you're gonna live. These can be a real pain in the opening hours, but once you get into the game's rhythm, you'll start to feel like you're genuinely mastering your environment. Radiation City is a real mixed bag from a technical standpoint though. Its visuals veer wildly between actually quite affecting and calamitously ugly. In general, it does mid-distance landscapes quite well and indoor environments and character models awfully. The ambient soundtrack, however, is pretty much bang on. The movement controls feel stiff and clumsy, while the touch and drag inventory is only a little better. This is a game that makes you work for your pleasure in every way, whether you're trying to keep thirst at bay with a contaminated canteen or struggling with the game's clunky systems. But in true survival game fashion, you'll take a disproportionate amount of satisfaction from every tiny triumph. We do admire the scope, even if the technical stuff doesn't quite live up to its ambitions. That said, first-person shooter survival nuts will find a slightly yanky but formidable game that drives you on in spite of its flaws.